Hi, I'm Terry Kolath. I have the privilege today of interviewing Stokes Fishburne, a rocket scientist who lives in the estuary, and we're talking about something he was involved with, something we all remember, Apollo 13. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm glad to be here. I remember when you first brought this idea to the Academy, um, showing a film and talking about something you know about, you know more about than most of us, and it just was so exciting to me. First of all, when we see a movie that depicts something that really happened, we really wonder what else is there to the story. And you're going to share it with us, right? <laughs> so, Stokes, tell us a little bit about your involvement with Apollo 13. I know you're a rocket scientist. Yeah, well, yeah, basically I was um, graduate school at Ohio State University, mm -hmm. and I was the deputy director of the rocket research lab. Uh, working for a German rocket scientist, uh, you know, and then, um, and I went to work at Grumman Aerospace, who built the Luna module. Mm. I went to work there to do more research, and I got involved in troubleshooting um, with the, the Luna program, and, um, and but basically research. It happened eleven o'clock. PM, New York time, mm -hmm. in 1970, in April 1970, NASA did a masterful job. They really, the, the, the movie put a lot more drama into it, and they kind of strung out different aspects of it to get more drama into it. Uh, but things happened very, very quickly, um, and it was, uh, I keep thinking of it. My father used to tell me, Stokes, do it right the first time. And this whole result of the Apollo 13 rescue was thousands of engineers doing it right the first time. Since it occurred at 11 o'clock at night, I didn't find out about it until the next morning. And that's when I saw the New York Times and it said the accident the astronauts on the way home. Now they were already on the way home. All the decisions that you see that were made in the movie, mm -hmm. all of those were done in a couple hours. You know, even maybe even faster than that. But with the problem, they weren't going to the moon mm -hmm. because NASA did have that rule that everything had to work right. But as soon as they started losing oxygen in the command module, that's where the, um, the astronauts were traveling in the command module. And then two of them would just go into the lunar module to go down to the moon. But the three of them were in the, astro in, in the command module. And the power, electrical power and oxygen, breathing oxygen and water that they drank came from the oxygen. There were oxy liquid oxygen tanks mm. in, the, the, in the thing that's next to the command module that ruptured, the oxygen ruptured, blew the side off of the, off of, uh, the, the service module, and then the oxygen started going down. Mm. And as the oxygen went down, they saw the electricity going down. I mean, and that's when the astronauts called down, well, are you down to the, to, to the space center? And said, uh, hey, we have a problem here. This is Houston, say again, please. Yes. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. We've had a main B bus undervolt. We have a bus B undervolt. Now that means the electrical bus had, voltage had dropped. Mm -mm -mm. And okay, well, we'll see what we can do. But it didn't take them long to realize they were running out of oxygen. So they, they realized pretty quickly that they were going to have to use the Luna module, which had its own oxygen uh -huh. and its own supplies, but only for two men for two days. Oh my goodness. While they were on the moon. And there were three men. And there were three men. How long to get back? Basically, about three and a half days, three days. The math doesn't add up, does it? 
and they were already coming back. And when I got to work, uh, Dick Oman and I at, at Grumman we were put in charge of, okay, here's the situation. We can't, we, just before re-entry, we have to separate the lunar module from the command module. That hadn't been done on any, in any of the previous flights. Uh -oh. And to do that, we can't use rocket engines. There's no electrical power that we can use to separate. The astronauts have to be in the command module, so they can't run anything on the lunar module just before re-entry. Okay, so Stokes and Dick, your job is to contact NASA and tell them how we're going to separate the lunar module from the command module. Oh my gosh. And do it quickly. Quickly, because <laughs> they're on their way. They're on their way. Uh -huh. So we developed a technique to do this, to separate it, called NASA up, said this is what we recommend, and NASA said, uh, we'll get back to you. NASA got back to us in about two hours and said, that's what we're going to do. Oh. Um, then we had, we were doing a whole bunch of calculations, all with slide rules. This is 1970 now. Slide rules, equations on the blackboards and everything. The real old-fashioned way. Yes. There was really basically no choice. Right. And, um, but it was, it was two days, two and a half days. To wait. But in the end, they landed on time mm -hmm. <laughs> and at the right location in the Pacific Ocean all based upon the work that all of these engineers were doing, you know, and we get a call uh, to, to come to see the astronauts. Really? Yes. But just one of us because they didn't have enough room. So Dick and I flipped the coin. And so Dick won, so he went to see. And when he came back, he had a little thank you card about the big. And it had a piece of the netting from the um, Apollo mission, Apollo 13 mission, in the lunar module, had it on the card. And it was addressed to, to Dick Oman. And it was signed by the three astronauts. Wow. And so when Dick brought it back, and we said, OK, we'll flip a coin to see who gets that. He got the original. And I got the Xerox copy. We made a copy of it. <laughs> Years later, I'm going through my office and cleaning everything out, and I come across this, and I pitch it. I threw it out. But when the movie came out, I called. I said, oh, where's my thank you thing? Where? I called up Dick Oman, and I said, hey. He says, I know why you called me. You probably threw your stuff out. And I said, I did. He said, I did. I, I, I threw mine out, too. Oh, no. I said, wait a minute. You threw out that original card that had been signed? And he said, yes, I did. And I threw out all the charts that we made up and everything. And he said, you know, we, we were doing our job. You know, and um, <laughs> anyway, we still kid each other about that. <laughs> well, Stokes, this is fabulous. So. So what's going to happen is we're going to watch the movie so we can all feel the drama and we can all relive what happened. And the second time we meet, that's when we hear behind the scenes details. That's right. That's when you hear a lot of the details. Yes. Please join us. You'll be so glad you spent this time with Stokes Fishburne, our very own rocket scientist from the estuary.